Welcome to Game Romp Easy Mode, a chill gaming podcast just about our video gaming escapades. Yeah, that works. <laughs> I'm your host, Deanna. And David. And this week, what do we have this week? Should I go first or you go? Uh, go ahead. You're, okay. We're talking. Um, so this past week has been almost like 99% Stardew Valley. Oh, the... I, that means you did play something else? Oh, okay. Technically, yeah. I did try a little bit of Fallout for like five minutes, yeah. minus helping you with your thing. And then also a tiny, like maybe half hour of Fallout 1. Yeah. Which I didn't continue because I forgot old games don't automatically save. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> um, so let's start with the big one, I guess, is Stardew Valley. So basically, this entire week was just trying to blow through winter, because winter has like the least amount of stuff. Yeah. And yes, I technically could focus on the on the mines because I finally made it to the skull caverns. Um, and I need I I know I need to work on that. But what is the skull caverns? Is that the desert? Yeah, that's okay. the desert. Um, and since this last big update of 1.6 i'm assuming because i don't remember seeing this last time in the skull caverns there's also this big old button but every time i hit it my character is just like confused oh (laughs) so i don't know i'm assuming i have to wait to hit that button after i reach level 100 in the skull caverns that's the button you press when you want a million dollars and that it randomly kills somebody in the whole world that's sick (laughs) (laughs) except you didn't get a million dollars also that and like is it this world because like no no it's if it's just start is if it's just stardew valley like oh god there's only like not even 30 people to choose from no there's a big world in stardew we just don't see the rest of it i mean that guy was like in a war somewhere right yeah i guess and there's like zuzu city or whatever it's called oh i've never heard of that yeah, it only comes up a couple of times. Is like, that is that where you start in the beginning of the game, in that office building? I'm assuming, yeah. Hmm. Like, Zuzu City, I think, comes up when Shane talks about taking therapy. And I believe Sebastian mentions it when he, like, takes out his motorcycle to go somewhere. Interesting. That um, would be, like, an inch... What if they did, like, an expansion or a DLC or, like, the Zuzu City one where you could just visit there and, like... I don't know if this is confirmed or not, and it's probably not Zuzu City specifically, but I think Chocolatier, Haunted Chocolatier is supposed to take place in the same universe as Stardew. I could be wrong, but I think it was supposed to be the same universe. Yeah, I don't really know too much about that game. And I know, like, yeah, even in Stardew with Kent and stuff, they do talk about the war going on with the other faction or whatever. Obviously, it's not expanded upon in Stardew Valley. Yeah, and that's fine, obviously. But there is, like, you know, you can make your own head cannons. It'll be interesting, though, to see if in the future if Haunted Chocolate here does bring up any of that. Because, like, all these all these ghosts, so I don't know, maybe they're, like, soldiers of the war or some shit. <laughs> hmm. That would be so interesting. Are you excited about the Chocolate Tear game, or you, will you play it? Cause I, I will probably play it because Concerned Ape is just like a fantastic yeah. indie dev. Yeah. And he deserves all of our money. <laughs> well, he's. Look, considering yeah, how many yeah. updates he's done for Stardew Valley, I think I can handle him not the, like, what, $30 game or whatever he's probably going to charge. I don't know. I mean, so it's there's, worth a, it. there's a $30 game I want to get now that I've been kind of hesitating on. <laughs> yeah. I not mean, because they're... I don't want to play him, just, you know, money. We're not made of money. That's fair. But someday in the future. So, yeah, I mean, I would be curious because, uh, okay, it's been a while since I've read literally anything on Haunted Chocolate here. But, like, I guess you're kind of farming for the ingredients and maybe foraging, but also, like, running your own little business. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm, I would be curious of doing that because, like, you can't, even with mods, I don't think you necessarily run your own business in Stardew Valley. Like, you can make things and sell them, but it's not like, oh, I'm going to make a bakery and people are going to come by and eat it or stuff. Yeah, fair. Um, But there are mods where you can, like, kind of pseudo-make your own bakery or 
little cafe if you want because there's all the items that make it look like that it just you're not gonna have visitors <laughs> oh the mod can't make people just show up not that i'm aware of i mean i haven't checked all mods but probably not yeah that sounds very complicated to do yeah um so running the business aspect would be very interesting because i am kind of into like management games yeah so that would be fun we completely went off topic didn't we Mm, I don't know. You were talking about Stardew. Okay, so. uh, let's go back. So, worked my way through winter, and I finally hit spring. Um, any big things happened during winter? Mostly just Christmas. getting to the... I, I guess, like, the Winter Star Festival, but you just talk to everyone once. You give the gift to your uh, secret Santa, if you will, or whatever. So, oh. I got George, so I just gave him a cup of coffee. He was happy. Oh, my God. Because I literally, I checked all the items I owned. Nothing seemed to register as him loving it. Hmm. So, I'm like, well, the next best is just like it. I'll just give him a cup of coffee, whatever. <laughs> he was happy. He's an old man. He doesn't eat much. Wow. Um, and then... My my secret Santa was Gus. I'm oh, sorry. I'm just thinking of like showing up to a secret Santa and you just like show up and you're like, oh, um, here's this cup of Dunkin' Donuts I bought. <laughs> hey, this is homemade coffee. <laughs> that being said, have you seen some of the people get their gifts from their secret Santas in this game? No, I don't follow the subreddit. Let me guess. Lewis is underwear. No. <laughs> He's not giving you his own underwear. That's No, weird. you I know people they have like Oh, uh, no, I meant them getting gifts from the NPCs. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Like I remember one was Clint gave someone a geode, which you then like basically have to pay for him <laughs> yeah. to crack it open. <laughs> um there's probably been things like I don't know Robin giving you fucking wood or something and not the good kind. Oh my god. <laughs> So I, I ended up having Gus and he gave me, um, was it poppy seed muffin or something, which I can then just give to Leah because she fucking oh, loves those. You're a re-gifter. What am I going to do? Eat it? <laughs> yeah. That's I okay. got so much other food that I can actually give buffs and stuff. Mm -hmm. Or I could just sell it for like 200 gold. Oh my God. <laughs> this is metagaming Christmas. Hey, thanks, uh, Gus, for this muffin. I'm just going to throw this in the trash can. <laughs> but yeah, the Winter Star Festival is like cute, but not much happens. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's most of those events, right? Pretty much. And then finally made it to spring. And the first day that it rained, I, I bought the um, mermaid's pendant. So I like immediately went over to Leah's house and gave her the pendant. She's like, ah, I accept. Of course. So now we're getting married in three days and it just happens to be on Lewis's birthday. Sucks for him. Actually, it's not like the worst thing because I've seen people get married on the, not the opponent, but the other person's birthday. <laughs> like marrying Emily on Clint's birthday just to like really shove it in his face. Oh, jeez. A lot of people hate Clint. He's awkward, but I don't think he gets, he needs quite the hate that he gets, Yeah, but whatever. That's a whole other discussion. Yeah. Um, so I'm getting married to Leah. I've been trying to redecorate my farm. Originally, I had tried the setup where I would put the sign and designate what seeds were in that area. I didn't even bother trying this time. I just put down the, um, put down the sprinklers and then put down anything. It doesn't fucking matter to me. Wow. What? You're just mixing crops? Yeah, like, is that, like, a big deal? Because, like... No, I mean, you do you. I think As long as I keep the crops that are on the trellises. So I think in spring it's, like, the green beans. And I put those in, in a single line of five. That mm. way I can easily water them. Everything else I'm not going to have to water. Because it's on the sprinklers, so it's like, True, but it just sits there. I don't know. I guess I'd have to see, but I like my gardens a little bit more orderly. I mean, maybe, but I just rushed on the first day, and I was like, ah, oh, fuck it, I'll just plant it everywhere. I mean, I guess that's fair, especially, like, in spring, like, after the long hiatus of not doing much, just to be like, oh, God, it's time to get to work and put all the plants, and yeah. On the plus side, I do have a, a ton of animals, so I got, like... I kind of lost count of how many chickens I have. 
I have at least two ducks. I have two void chickens. I have the little dinosaur, which I thought I installed a mod that turns it into a tortoise, but it's not registering. So it's just the little dinosaur, which <laughs> is fine, but whatever. Um, then I finally got a rabbit. I got a goose. Um, I think that's all in the coop. Oh, and I finally fixed the mod that was, for some reason, stopping the coop and barn from doing the auto feeder. I don't know what caused that, but whatever. Mm -hmm. Then in the deluxe barn, I have two cows, two goats, a sheep. I think I just bought a donkey, and I have a little piggy. Oh, actually, the piggy finally grew up into a full pig, so... Once they get a truffle, turn into truffle oil, and then I can finish two out of the three items in the community center, I believe. I need truffle oil and the truffle. But I need a red snapper, but that doesn't only appears in summer and fall and rain, so... Ugh. So you're Fun trying day. to finish the whole community center? Yeah. Have you ever can... done that before? No. Okay, cool. I've never made it this far. <laughs> mm, interesting. And it's funny because I finally finished, like, um, whichever one it takes to unlock the minecarts. But I've been just walking around so long without the minecarts that I keep forgetting to use said minecarts. Yeah, it, you get into your swing of things. Yeah, so it's like, oh, that. they're there, but I keep forgetting to use them, so okay, fine, whatever. It's handy. Mm. You know, the thing I probably barely ever used was the teleport statues. Oh, I've been using those a lot more because now they have like the little mystery boxes and surprise, surprise or spoilers. Um, oftentimes you can get those in the mystery boxes when you break them open. Hmm. Um, so I've been using those a lot, mostly just the one to return to the farm. Mystery but, boxes. Yeah, that's new. I don't remember that in the game. Yeah. There's a lot you don't know from the game. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I'll ever play this game again, but it's interesting to see how much it's grown. Mm. Mm. So I've been using those a lot lately, and I guess I'm kind of excited to just kind of continue a little bit. And it's easy to, like, play this while on Discord with groups of friends. Mm -hmm. Because, like, there is some, obviously, dialogue in the game, but it's not super story heavy. So I can, like, talk with people on Discord while playing this at the same time and not get too goofed up. Yeah. Because one of the reasons I didn't continue with the Fallout 76, because, like, okay, I know the story's not super grand or anything, but there is dialogue. And while I do have the subtitles on, I, I couldn't talk with the, the group of friends live on Discord yeah. without getting all discombobbled with the dialogue that was happening in the game yeah. I'm like okay i'm just gonna quit this go to start you and just do that for I, a while yeah that, that's something about rpgs like fallout 76 or even boulder's gate or like divinity or any rpg that you can play multiplayer like i find it hard to play those games with other people mm. even with you like <laughs> yeah i know it's just when we're talking to npcs it's like oh then i gotta talk to you and like are you paying attention to me am i paying attention to you are we paying attention to the npc to know what the hell we're doing it's kind of a mess so yeah. i don't know it reminds me back of the days like of wow when like part of me and i know you did too like to read the quest logs and figure out what the heck we're doing and the story of the world and all that stuff but then it's like if you're in like a group and everyone's you want to hurry along yeah and that's why it did kind of help to have that uh, addition, which was originally, I guess, a mod, and they incorporated it in the game. It was like, okay, just get the quest, and then it'll show you the dot. Yeah. I was like, okay, fine. You it it what, does come in handy for me. You know what helped me a lot, too, was uh, there was another mod for World of Warcraft that um, made it so that when you talk to somebody in the quest, they would have like a... It was almost like a JRPG speech box where it shows like their head talking and then like just a line or two mm. and then you would click and it showed another line and somehow reading through dialogue like that was less i don't know intimidating than just the big old wall of text on that sheet of paper that they would give you before yeah i mean that makes sense it definitely gives you a little bit of a, a break or makes it succinct enough or yeah, it makes like... it seem like oh my god i'm not just gonna have to read an essay because they're just having a conversation and you don't really know when it's gonna end and that's fine but if I'm going to have a conversation with somebody and I see their full dialogue and it's like three paragraphs long, mm. 
my mind is just like, oh, God, do I really want to listen to all this? I mean, it's the same thing if you're going on, like, Reddit or a forum or what have you. If someone's posting a massive page paragraph or whatever and doesn't break it up, I'm not going to bother reading that. Yeah. At least put some line breaks for me, damn. (laughs) Yeah. And then there was the little, uh, I also explored a little bit of Fallout 1. And again, that it only lasted so long because then I died and then I go to reload and I realize, oh, it's an old, old game. And you have to save for Finally. yourself. There's no auto save. So that is fine. I understand it. It's a, it's an old game. That's just how they worked. I just, it's been so long since I played an old game that I kind of forgot. <laughs> so that's, that's fine. funny. I'll try it again at some point in the future, maybe this week. Give me something new to talk about next week. Sure. I mean, if you want to. <laughs> you you actually do think you want to play it again? I mean, it wasn't too weird and old or um, clunky. Clunky in the sense it took me a while to figure out the controls. Yeah. But again, it's because it's an old game. The controls were probably brought up in the manual. I don't have a manual. Yeah. So that kind of screws you over. I did eventually figure it out a little bit more, obviously, as I went on. And they did, I think it was like F1, you bring up and it'll show you, okay, these are the controls. Okay, fine. Um, Having to drag over each individual, uh, what's the thing? Stim pack. Yeah. Each individual stim pack to the button to use it was kind of a pain in the ass. But Yeah. I ended up picking, I think her name's Natalia from like there's three preset people you can choose from yeah next time maybe i'll just try and make my own because it was kind of difficult because natalia is like i guess her backstory was that she's like russian for whatever reason and then uh she's also like a gymnast and she had like the high sneak and and high luck and stuff like that i was like okay that's kind of like the character i want but she's also high unarmed which was fine for all the rats that i came across but then, yeah, I got silly sucked into trying to go against the red scorpions, and that didn't work out too well. Yeah. <laughs> She's, like, trying to punch these these red scorpions with just, like, the brass knuckles, and they're, like, absolutely destroying her with their stingers. Yeah, that makes sense. So, oopsie-daisy. But I did, like, destroy all the rats. I didn't level up, but I destroyed all of them. <laughs> I guess it was fine. I remember when I played it, I... I probably got about as far as that. Yeah, and the rat scorpions were a nightmare. So it's like, okay, obviously I'm not supposed to do this. And I just went to explore other places and I went to other towns. But I don't think I got too, too much further. Just because I just, it's so, I guess you could say it's clunky. It's just from a different time. And like, I I didn't grow up playing those games. So it's hard for me to get into that. Mm. Whereas like, I can go back and play NES games or Super NES games easily, or even like a King's Quest game, which is also a PC game. But somehow Fallout, I just, I don't know. Maybe I'll try it again one day, but I don't think so. (laughs) Yeah, I don't think I played any of these types of games when I was a kid. I played The Sims. I played all those really bad tycoon games. That's where, like, my enjoyment of business simulation stuff probably stems from. Yeah. Zoo Tycoon, stuff like that. I'll probably get used to it to some degree. I just know, okay, next time I'm not going to go to the Rad Scorpions and I'll just skip and go straight, hopefully, to Vault 15. And then we'll go from there. And I just have to remember to save. Yeah, save often. <laughs> because you can get, you can run into random encounters on the overworld. Yeah, that's true. I did get hit by two red scorpions on the overworld trying to make it to Vault 15, so that's fine. Yeah. But now I know, and then I'll try again, and it's no big deal. And I'll try to get someone who can actually use a gun. Cause like, yeah, that's the other thing. I, I remember I created my own character. So you can do that and just build to your play style, I guess. Yeah, like I want to keep the sneak. I want to do the gun, or at least a sharpshooter or whatever they want to call it back then. Because like the unarmed... Yeah, I guess that's fine for rats and stuff, but the second I give her uh, the knife, she doesn't know what she's doing and suddenly just slashes and fucks it up. Or I give her the the gun and she's like, oh, how do I shoot? Like this giant fucking rat scorpion, somehow she's missing more than 50% of the time. It's like... It's just, yeah, a lot of RNG. I don't understand. <laughs> it's interesting because if you play Fallout 3... 
that was the first one that went into first person, right? Mm. But they tried to keep some of that RPG randomness into it. So even if you were aiming at something perfectly, it would still do rolls to see like how good, like if your gun skill was really bad, even if your cursor was directly on the enemy, it would still roll to see like... You shoot th- off to the side. <laughs> yeah. It's like you think you're aiming right, but your character is not good with guns. So sometimes you're just going to miss. Mm. And they would do that, yeah, with like like the the spread of the bullets so i I mean i kind of have to deal with the same whenever i play rim world they are so bad at shooting yeah oh rim world is a whole other beast (laughs) that i don't want to get into right now but yeah it's like i don't i kind of don't mind the rpg elements in fallout 3 and also i think um if you play fallout 4 with the the frost mod Mm -hmm. they do a thing where um okay you know how in fallout 4 in a lot of the Bethesda fallouts, basically, like, when you level up and you put skills into your gun skills, it makes it so that the damage is more. So, like, oh, your 10 millimeter gun was doing, I don't know, say 20 damage, but you put in a skill point and now it does 22 damage or 25 damage. And it's like, that's kind of weird because, like, a bullet is a bullet, right? If it yeah. hits, it hits. But if you play with, like, Frost or in Fallout 3, instead of, like, your gun does more damage, it's just you're more accurate with it so like when you're unskilled you're just sometimes you're going to miss because you're just not a skilled character at using it Hmm. but if you do hit it's going to do the full damage but the more skill points you put into it the better you aim the more often you'll hit and i kind of prefer it that way instead of just like magically oh my bullets do more damage i mean i get both of them because it feels weird if you're pointing your gun with the mouse and you're right on the target. How the fuck are you missing? Because your character is not skilled at using the gun. And even though you think you're aiming right, mm. maybe your arm is slightly off or they're holding it wrong. Like, you can't see me. I guess you could argue it, yeah. And especially, like, imagine a new character that's, like, not experienced in fighting or warfare or shooting guns. They're going to be nervous in a gunfight. They're not going to be, like... The dot is on the head. It's going to hit the head. I guess. So I kind of like that. It's probably an unpopular opinion. I kind of like that they can make that into the game. Like, you think you're hitting, and just like, you know, average Joe might think he's really good with a gun until he actually has to use it. But your skill isn't there yet, so sometimes you're not going to hit. So then you should like RimWorld in Fallout 3, right? I do like Fallout 3. I don't like RimWorld because RimWorld, they feel even worse. (laughs) But you could argue it's the same concept, right? I I mean, I don't know. I've never played RimWorld far enough to, to see if they ever get good at shooting. I mean, I think they do, but there's like, is it 10 or 20 levels for each skill? I think it's 20. So like, even if you get up to level 10, they're still going to be like 50-50, if you will. Yeah. So they do get better. It just takes so long. Yeah, I, I don't know enough about RimWorld to really comment on that. But then there's just everything else about RimWorld that I'm not, like, super into. It's weird. You'd think I'd be into a game like that. But I think part of it is just, like, there's a lot of extra micromanaging. But also, like, I just find it kind of visually uninteresting. So it doesn't hold my attention. No. It's because it's too simple. I don't know. It's just, it's kind of ugly. You know, there's a lot of ugly games that I'm okay with. But somehow RimWorld has got that. Maybe it's because they don't have legs and they're just, like, little... They, they're just like weird little pngs i don't know it's weird <laughs> well there is a mod that adds arms or adds hands so they kind of look like rain man you know you can also of... add i think the feet if you want a lot of people have compared pal world to rim world what yeah because you have a base and you're controlling your you have a base full of little dudes that you like they give tasks to do mm. and like i prefer rim world at least in Pal World, like everything looks good. It could be argued. I don't know. I I was able to get into that, but somehow with Rim World, it's just. See, I'm the opposite. Cause like I have also played. I mean, I haven't played in forever, but have played before. The Prison Architect. So like, it doesn't bother me that there are little stumps walking around. Mm. Cause I just kind of fill in the information in my head. I guess it doesn't bother me. Like I've I tried guess. the mod that adds the quote-unquote hands and feet which basically are just circles adding the hands was fine because they put it around like the guns and and armor and stuff that they use 
but the feet were kind of too much for me so i only added the circle hands <laughs> weird i don't know what that would look like so i can't like really i said it's it. kind of reminiscent of rayman where there's no appendages that's not a great them. look either yeah <laughs> oh well it is what it is so what have you been playing this past week um well i played more of uh i guess the two big things i've been playing again fallout 76 still mm. i think i've kind of finished all the uh atlantic city stuff i think there's one more thing in philadelphia that i or not philadelphia pittsburgh that i haven't done so how maybe, much gambling do they have in atlantic city you can gamble but i don't really bother because is it just slots do they have tables they have tables but like i think it's if i'm i might be remembering wrong but I, there's like a little ui that pops up so it's not like you can't see like if you play on the roulette for example there's a little ui that pops up and it's just like oh this is what it landed on it's not like happening in first person that you could look at the table and see it happening oh that's not as fun yeah it's not it's not like even if it was immersive. like a ui that pops up you should still be able to see the table as it's working you can see the table and there's like an animation that plays but it doesn't match up to like oh it landed on a red space or it landed on okay 20. so they immediately fucked up it's like yeah just a little ui thing so whatever Ooh. the slots do actually work that that way in first person or whatever if you go play a slot one of the slots they will spin and what it is in the world is what it is and so if you get three in a row or whatever it is then yeah you'll win or you'll lose and but it's like slot machines i've never been one for slot machines do better bethesda <laughs> like any game that has slot machines like dragon quest or pokemon i just i can't stand those things slots are kind of i don't know i mean i have gotten into them before and ironically the one time i've actually been real life gambling which was only with 20 bucks from dad i played a slot because it's the cheapest thing and when you only have 20 dollars to play with you can't really go to a table where it's like oh each play is 10 dollars. i can't afford that. i think the only time i liked a slot machine was in a sonic game <laughs> If you remember Casino Night Zone, like... Okay, but that's different because you're controlling Sonic. It's not like an actual yeah, slot Yeah, and machine. that's probably why I like it. It's like, oh, it's just a little pinball thing and you go up there and it's just like, oh, you get some rings. Mm. And it's not like, it's not serious. It's not like you can only get Scyther or, or whatever or Porygon from, from gambling. Mm. So good luck. You have to be in here for an hour and hope for the best. <laughs> or like in Dragon Quest. Actually, there's a really funny moment in Dragon Quest, um... 11 where like you first get to this casino and it's like oh there's some really good armor and weapons in there if you want to sit here and grind at the casino you can unlock a really good weapon early on and some people do that i don't remember if i did or not i probably didn't but later on you get to another casino and they rig the chances way 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 in your favor so like if you're playing the slot machines you'll just be getting like a ton of jackpots not like constantly but a lot so much so that people you see them constantly on reddit being like oh my god look how lucky i am this is like my third jackpot <laughs> and then people are like are you in the monster casino and they're like yeah and it's like okay well have fun with that i won't spoil what happens but yeah there's a reason for that and it's it was really a, a good little twist that made me go from like oh god i hate casinos to okay that was kind of funny <laughs> So it's, it's yeah, kind of like a deal with favorite. the devil kind of thing. Yeah, they're going to get you a different way afterwards. Yeah, so that was fun. That was that was the one time in a game where I'm like, okay, the slot machine was kind of fun because they tied it into a different thing. Mm. And you said that was Dragon Quest Eleven. Yeah. Is that the PC one? Yeah, it's on PC. It's on Switch. It's on... It's... Well, is that the one we have on... Yeah. Okay. I have it on my Steam account. There was a problem with that on PC, though, wasn't there? Was it frame rate issues? Um... Was there? I thought there was issues, or was it loading, or something. The, the only issue that I remember them being is that later on they released a new version that had, like, additional content. And instead of offering it as a DLC for PC, you just had to rebuy it altogether. Oof. Because it was a port of, um, I think it was a, the Switch version. Oh god, okay, this is gonna be a, a big rabbit hole, but basically... When that game first came out, I think it was on PS4 and PC, and that was the base game. It was not on Switch, because the Switch couldn't handle it. At some point, they're like, okay, we're going to port it to Switch, but it needs work to run on the Switch, because the Switch is basically a telephone. <laughs> and so they put a lot of work in. They 
you know, toned down the graphics a bit. But while they were at it, they added a bunch of new content. And instead of making that content available as DLC for people who own the, you know, the next gen versions or whatever, or the PC version, they're like, um, we're just going to swell the, the, the Switch version, and that's going to have all the new content, but it's going to have the worst graphics. Yikes. So you either buy the good graphics version that doesn't have all the content, or the one with worse graphics that have that has the extra content. So it's kind of a mess. I have the old version, so it has all the good graphics, in, but like it doesn't have a lot of the new additions, but... That game is humongous, even without that stuff. Mm. Like, not to get too spoilery, but like, there's three chapters, and the first two chapters are most of the game. And you can honestly be like, I beat chapter two, I'm done. Mm. But there's a point in after you beat the game, you can kind of do this. It's not a huge spoiler to say this, but I won't go too much into detail. But you can basically imagine in an RPG or any adventure story. There's a big bad guy. He does a bunch of bad stuff. A lot of people die. It's horrible. Blah, blah, blah. Whatever, right? Mm. What if, after you beat the game, you find a magical thingy-majigger and it's like, hey, didn't it suck that all those people died? Well, we can make it not happen. And that's basically, like, the third arc. Well, it is Dragon Quest, which was... whose entire art design is after... Yeah, basically I, Akira. Akira Toriyama didn't have anything to do with the story, though. I guess, but it, it just, I mean, it kind of sounds like the Dragon Balls. Like, you can just wish it undone. Kind of. It's a little more complicated than that, but yeah. I think that, I think the third arc of that game kind of cheapens the experience of the second chapter, because there's somebody very important to your party that just dies. And it's like a big impactful moment and like one of the characters changes forever. Mm. A lot of stuff happens and like that second chapter, they even like change the overworld music. It's a bit darker and it's like, man, this is depressing. So I guess but, you can go through it, play the second chapter, accept that as the story. Yeah. Then when you play the it's third more, chapter, it, it's kind of like, okay, I can well, see. Well, it's more impactful to me to be like, yes, all this hardship happened. It was horrible, but we made it through. We conquered the overwhelming odds we will live with these scars and move on the best we can and the third chapter is like oh don't worry we can just undo everything it's fine <laughs> you didn't learn anything all that hardship was for nothing all that those tears eh, is don't worry you never cried them i don't like that it cheapens it to me yeah that's fair but it is what it is so whatever i mean it's kind of like how i don't know if this is connected enough for you but somehow sometimes tv series have done that where like it's really good up to one part and then there's just this complete difference and everyone's like no this season doesn't count it just it sucks hmm. that happens to scrubs that happens to um game of thrones they're like every you can watch everything except the last season um that happened to heroes we only watched the first season there's apparently i think three yeah, I don't remember why we didn't like the second one. Something about time travel back to, like, ancient Japan or something. It just... I don't think we ever watched this past the first season. We watched, like, one episode of the second season, I think. Oh, okay. Well, I just remember everyone was like, first season's great. Don't go beyond that. So, aside from one episode, we never did. Yeah. I was like, fine. I can I can live with just one season. I know that story, and it was good, and it ended fine. It's kind of like Indiana Jones for me. Like, the first three are just wonderful. And then the fourth one was just kind of like, uh. And then the fifth one, I just didn't even want to watch. I haven't even watched the fifth one, which apparently a lot of people didn't watch the fifth one. Sometimes it's just like you got to be able to just let your stories end. But then that means Harrison Ford got injured for nothing. <laughs> well, maybe they should have invited Short Round back. Mm. Anyway, why, why did I get onto Dragon Quest? I was talking about Fallout and... Okay, so I played Fallout, and you asked me about gambling. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, because you, I mean, Atlantic City, that's all I know yeah, it yeah, about. Yeah, 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 that's fine. <laughs> um, the other game I've been playing is still, oh, God, I already forgot the name of it. <laughs> I made sure to, is like... Is it the Chronicles thing? Yeah, Euden Chronicle, basically the sequel, then um, Spiritual Successor. Mm. And I finally got to the first, quote-unquote, war battle, and the first duel, and to the castle, basically, where you, like, build up your castle. And this sounds like gobbledygook to anyone who hasn't played Suikoden, but anyone who has played Suikoden knows exactly what I'm talking about. But basically, like, the Suikoden games are kind of well-renowned for being, like, 
JRPGs, obviously, and you got your standard JRPG stuff. But every so often, there's these more grand battles where it's not just like your six dudes versus like a boss. It's just like hundreds or thousands of soldiers in like the grand kingdom versus kingdom or country versus country battles, right? Okay. So I finally got to the first one of those in this game. And it was a little weird, but eventually wrapped my head around it. There, There's this one part for anyone who's played this game. You're defending like this town, right? And there's basically it's a three by four grid. The top six spaces are like your town and the bottom six are like a field and the enemy is invading. Okay. There's a, a wall and a gate on the second row. So you start on the first row with your three dudes. There's a wall right beneath you. And then the enemies are pushing up. I moved my two dudes down to the wall because they can stand on it to like, oh, I figured they'd have a height advantage. Hmm. But for some reason, the middle dude couldn't go onto the gate. It was inaccessible. Something happens, a tank blows up the gate. Then you can move into the gate section. But the weird thing is like if you were like my other dudes on the left or right, they couldn't move right into the gate to like reinforce it. Hmm. They had to move up and then right or down and then right. So I ended up losing because I didn't know for some reason they just couldn't move right or left. It was weird. I guess that, I mean, it depends on how the gate is set up, but I've seen gates that have part of the wall on top so that you could cross over, but maybe not all gates had that Yeah, it was kind of something like that. I just, I don't know, the way the map was set up, I didn't know that was going to be a thing, so that kind of screwed me over the first time, but... That's fair. So I got a game over, restarted, and and then it was fine. And then it's like, oh, we got to run away, blah, blah, blah. And then there's like the first duel. And duels in Suikoden were kind of like one-on-one battles, right? I mean, that's what a duel is, Yeah, yeah. But it's not like the traditional RPG where it's like you got HP and you got your skills and magic and items. It's more like, it's kind of like a rock, paper, scissors that's very dialogue heavy. Oh, geez. So like they'll be talking and if the guy says something like, here I come, I'm going to get you, then you know like, oh, I'm going to defend or counter because that guy's going to attack and then you can counter. Or sometimes he'll make a more passive remark, like, I don't want to fight, just lower your weapons. And then you know that he's not going to attack and you can just strike, which sounds bad. But like, anyway, it's basically you have to figure out by what's being said, if it's better to attack or counter or whatever. But the weird thing is in this game, like, okay, in the original Suikoden games, they have the rock, paper, scissor kind of thing where it's like attack, defend, or special. Mm. Attack beats defend. Defend beats special. Special beats attack okay in this game special is locked until you fill up a bar and i don't know it was weird i ended up quote unquote kind of losing the fight which was really silly looking but it didn't matter the story progressed and now we ran away to the castle and this is the castle in sukodans where like this is where you recruit a hundred plus characters and holy shit not all of them fight sometimes you're recruiting someone because they're really good at running a storehouse or they're good at farming or they run an inn, or whatever the case may be. So, like, that's a whole appeal of, like, especially Sukoden 2, because you, like, you're building up a town. It's just funny, because it feels like it's, it happened so fast in this game. Like, they were really, really wanting to be like, and here's the town you can build up, which I guess is fine. But, yeah, at one point they're like, oh, time to name your, your castle, your town. And in the old games, you just have a dialogue box where you pick what you want to name it, right? Mm. In this one, it's like, here's three choices. If you don't like those three choices, there's another one that says, let me think about it. You click on let me think about it, three more choices. Oh, no. I'm going to think about it more. Three more choices. And I kept, like, looking at all these names, and I'm like, I don't really like any of these. And I swear I went, like, five or six times, and, like, it still kept going. And I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm just going to pick this one. And I ended up picking Arcadia. Because <laughs> I'm like, oh, Arcadia, that's, like, the island up there in uh, Maine, right? I guess. There's a lot of Arcadias. What's the What's another Arcadia? Isn't uh, the Arcadia land management down in a different part of Rhode Island? I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> I just know it from, like, from There's Bar a lot Harbor. of forests, I think, that are named after Arcadia or something similar to it. Yeah, I wonder what that name is or originates from. Arcadia. To me, that just makes me think of, like... An arcade? Yeah. <laughs> the kingdom of Arcade. Arcadia. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, that it's... I don't know what to feel about that game. I'm still going to play it because, I mean, I bought it. I I backed it on Kickstarter, but it's it's hard. It doesn't, I guess it, I guess it can't, uh, I don't want to say it doesn't live up to its 
It, I mean, it's always hard to live up to a predecessor, right? Especially one as good as Sakoden 2, yeah. That's fair. Like, And I have to say one quick thing is the duel, the way you make it sound, it's less of a, a weapons duel and more of like a, a debate kind of duel since you have to be it's so dialogue heavy and you have to like try and figure out what they're actually saying or something yeah shit. you could because you like no one way. in an actual duel is going to be like if they're smart about it they're just going to be silent so that you don't know how to oh yeah them. <laughs> uh, that's because like this is like the f- the first duels that are teaching you how, the, how it works okay I they guess get like fair. that but later on it's a lot harder to figure out like you it's less they tell you i'm going to attack and more like are they saying something that's full of rage? Are they taunting you? Mm. You have to like kind of work it out. And even in this one, there was one line that, that screwed me up. And that's probably why I ended up losing. They're like, oh, I shouldn't have attacked here. <laughs> and I got countered. And yeah, I ended up losing. So whatever. Once the Sukoden remasters come out, I'm going to like, I'm debating on if I'm probably just going to go straight to Sukoden 2 and play Sukoden 2 with you. Because mm. I want you to see how like the game is, this series was at its peak. Even if like we're missing out on the first game story, but that's okay because that's more of a story of a neighboring country. Do they have a timetable of when these are coming out? It should be this year, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know exactly when, but yeah, I'm kind of excited about that, even though I've played Sukoden 2 so many times. Mostly because they've updated the overworld graphics. They're still 2D, but they just look nicer. And also they've updated the translation. Because mm. as much as I love Sukoden 2, that original localization was very rushed and there's parts that are actually kind of bad now as far as graphics are they still sprite yeah yeah they the game still looks like sukoden 2 except the backgrounds background graphics have been updated a little bit okay but they still look like a like a ps1 game where it's like you know this the pixels and everything there's no 3d yeah that's fair it's just they they went back and like updated it for widescreen and added some a little bit of post-processing not too much thankfully because if you go overboard with that stuff it looks not good to me like i know a lot of people love bravely no default. not briefly no sorry not bravely default um what's the other one octopath traveler right yeah there's too much filtering and then like there was another game they made that was um i don't remember it's not unicorn overlord that was a different company but yeah, I think I know what you mean when they add too many filters. It's yeah, pretty bad. it's just like, these sprites look great, but you've got like a smear of like hues all over it. It's blurry. There's sparkles everywhere. I, I don't like it. I don't like it. Yeah, me neither. Uh, no, sir, I don't like it. <clears throat> yeah. So, well, that that's something I'm looking forward to. And I'll still keep playing this game. I think this game looks nice. They have a little bit of post-processing in it, too sometimes it's a bit overwhelming i think i talked about this last time and sometimes it's just a little bit so it's not bad it looks fine there was one part that i played that was like a stealth section and that part was not good it wasn't hard it was just like why is this in this game we don't need a stealth game stealth thing in this game that seems to be a big problem because i i know i've seen other creators or game journalists or whatever you want to call them and they're like, why do so many games that don't focus on stealth have a stealth section? It's so weird, too, because, like, in, in in this game, they had, like, oh, we're infiltrating a camp and there's a bunch of enemy soldiers. But it's nighttime, so they have lanterns. And you can see the lantern light on the ground. So don't step in the lantern light. That makes sense. But it really, it, it looks so silly because you can see everything. And there's certain points where they're, like, just huddled talking between all these soldiers with, the, like, the lights around them. It looks so goofy. I it, it it was not a good decision in my opinion. If it comes up again, you'll have to tell me or show me on YouTube or something. Yeah, maybe, now I'm curious. Maybe I'll look up a, a let's play or a, or something so I can show you that section. It just looks so so bad. Like there's six characters here talking. Like we gotta be sneaky. Be careful. Don't get caught. And there's like I don't know, like four or six soldiers with like lanterns, and like. It's nighttime, but it's video game nighttime, so you can still see everything. <laughs> it's just so goofy. It's one of those things where, like, in video games, you have to be able to use your imagination and, like, have the suspension of disbelief, right? Mm. But you kind of have to meet me halfway with the suspension of disbelief thing, because, like, this does not look good. <laughs> Do they also have the thing where, like, the light is a circle in the ground, so you know where not to go, but... 
the circle of light is like almost too sharp it doesn't diffuse over time like that yeah like having that specific ring of light is not how light works yeah it, except more it's more like a cone mm. a cone in front of them it's yeah it looks really weird I'll, I'll, I'll show you later it's a shame we can't you know put a visual up on the podcast but it is what it is anyway um i have so much more i would love to talk about but we're reaching 50 minutes so i guess we should call it to be fair there's also a lot of dead air i'm gonna have to edit out so do you want me to risk one more subject sure go ahead since we're probably not going to do like <clears throat> gaming news there was a discussion i saw on reddit and i'm just going to use this as a as a conversation starter because we don't have listener mail or anything like that but um they were talking about how ocarina of time was like a landmark game or it's an important game in video game history mm. and yeah it is but they were also saying like it's hard to recommend to people because it's old and it's like, oh, it's too blocky, or oh, the music's bad, which is a whole other conversation. Yeah, hold up a second, the music bad, excuse me? Anyway, so like, <laughs> that was a thing that really kind of annoyed me, and I, uh, I should try to be better about not being negative on the podcast. But it's like, they were saying that the, because of its age and how hard it is for normal people to play, that it's not just dated, but like almost irrelevant. And I'm like... Well, that's rude. You can say that about almost any media, though. Like, okay, Ocarina of Time. What about Final Fantasy VI on the Super Nintendo? What about Super Mario Brothers on the NES? And, like, like you can't even go with... I mean, some <sighs> bad graphics or old graphics could probably be on the edge of unplayable. Yeah. Like, for the instance of when I showed you Simcopter. That's pretty fucking bad. But <laughs> as far as, like, blockiness or maybe in the case of... Uh, Ocarina of Time to Polygon or whatever you want to call it. Kids fucking love, was it Minecraft and Roblox? Those are all basically just super blocky. Like, I don't I think, think the kids a... care that much. <clears throat> I think what the thing that helps those games is that they're HD. Whereas Ocarina of Time can be, I guess if you're playing on like an emulator, you can make it sharp. But, but there's going to be some elements that are really blurry. Like the pre-rendered backgrounds. I remember when I first walked into Hyrule Town as a kid on a CRTV. And I saw Hyrule Town. I was like, wow, this looks real. This looks like a real town. Mm. And because it was just like, you know, a picture that you were walking on top of. Yeah. So it's interesting. Like, but that is part of the history, like part of what made that game special at the time. There's so many things that it did first, like not that, but like, well, I don't know if it did Z targeting before anyone else, but that was one of the first games that made it like aiming in 3D is hard. So we're going to do this targeting thing. Yeah. And now it's just like every game has that. Like Dark Souls has the little dot you lock onto or whatever, right? Mm. So like there is a lot about Ocarina of Time that was like groundbreaking and like really innovative. And it is a really cool piece of gaming history. But I think anyone who ga cares about gaming history has to be able to go back and play these old games and realize these are a product of their time. Yeah. Just like how when you're playing Fallout, you know, like, okay, this was, this did a lot of amazing things for its time, but yeah, it does feel a little clunky today, and it's cool to be able to go back and experience it, but that doesn't necessarily mean you have to, like, you don't even have to finish playing it, just to see, like, some of the things it did, some of the dialogue choices you can do in the game. Yeah. Like, you get the idea. You don't have to necessarily beat it. So if somebody wants to be like, oh, Ocarina of Time, I've heard a lot about this, it's okay to play it for a little bit and, like, experience a little bit of it and be like, wow, that's cool, Maybe it's a little too dated for me. I don't want to finish playing it. But, like, I think it you don't have to be, like, every game needs a remake. Every game doesn't need to be Resident Evil 2 to get, like, a super high-def remake. Didn't they technically make a <clears throat> remake of Ocarina yeah. of Time for, like, On the, what, 3DS. the 3DS? Yeah. So there is that. But that's different, too, because it was a, pl uh, a portable. So it's not, like, a full-screen, full-on remake. Like, Resident Evil 2 is another good example. Resident Evil 2 was also another kind of groundbreaking game. I don't know if you could call it groundbreaking. It's it, it was the one that really like shot survival horror up into like the mainstream because of its presentation and had a lot of really good visual effects. Resident Evil One looks kind of funny, but Resident Evil Two, I think, especially the backgrounds and stuff, still hold up if you can get over the fact that they were de designed for like standard definition television CRTs. But that game looked amazing, and like they decided we're gonna remake it, and now the remake is like the quote-unquote definitive edition or whatever but that changes history in a way that yeah. sounds really dumb when i say it that way but like i mean every medium has its own history to it 
well, that's that's another thing I was getting into in, in the thing. Like, just because Ocarina of Time or Resident Evil Two or Final Fantasy VI, Chrono Trigger, Mario Brothers One, whatever, any game that are like historic, they could be remade. Yes, imagine imagine Super Mario Brothers One remade in like Mario Maker graphics for the for the Switch. It's like sure you could do it, but it's not the same thing anymore. No. So it's like. Yeah, you remade Resident Evil 2, but it's not exactly the same thing anymore. And that's fine. It can be its own thing. Same for Final Fantasy 7. Like, this remake looks better, but it's not really the same thing either. So it's like, sure, if you remade Ocarina of Time, you can make an amazing looking version. But again, it's really not going to be the same thing. So you're not really... Do other mediums go through this? Oh yeah, definitely. Think about like... um. Because another thing I discussed on the thing on the on the on Reddit, I, discussing is arguing, is pulling more weight than whatever. I I put I posted a comment like, okay, look, arguing that Ocarina of Time is irrelevant. What about something like Jaws? That was groundbreaking and like, but if you watch it now, its visual effects are going to be dated. Mm. Its pacing is like old timey movie pacing. Old ti- okay, not old timey. Holy cow! I'm sorry. Seventies <laughs> movies pacing where it's like. It's a little slower than where we're used yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. Whereas nowadays we have so many other superheroes and there has to be something going on every single fucking second on screen. Yeah, and it's like, it's just different, right? Or what about like Bela Lugosi's, um Dracula? I was thinking House on the Hill, but yeah. Yeah, those old movies like that. But like we watched, we watched Dracula and it was cool to experience what that movie was way back in the day and see why it was so... So it was cool seeing those movies, that Dracula, like for what it was. But yeah, it, it is a product of its time. But you can still be like, this movie is historic. I'm gonna go back and watch it and experience what it is. Or you can just watch a modern day retelling, like we watched um, Bram Stoker's Dracula with Keanu Reeves, right? Mm. And that was more modern, and that was a story of Dracula, and it's just it's different. Yeah. So it's like, and even like with House on the Hill. One, we watched it in, like, the original black and white. Because they did have a color version available, I think. Or that they had, like... I don't remember. Recolored it or something. It's like, no, I want to see in the original black and white. Because that's what it was made as. Yeah. And also, like, the subject <clears throat> is a little different. Because it was, you know... When was House in the Hill made? The 50s, 60s, something like that? I don't like know that? off the top of my head. It had that, if you will boomer logic or it had the oh i hate my wife and all this stuff and they're just completely at each other's throat and everything yeah and it's like we just have to accept that that's that's what they did back in those days like yeah. you can't get angry necessarily of of that you just accept that okay they're gonna have this like oh i hate my wife why did i marry you blah 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 throughout yeah the whole it, story. It, it's one thing to be like okay these this subject matter is silly and we have gotten past that but it's also like don't spend too much mental energy on getting worked up over actors and stories that a lot of these people are long dead anyways Mm -hmm. it's one thing to be like okay this is not how we view things now and this is silly it's another thing to be like i'm gonna get upset over it yeah like oh time to cancel this or whatever (laughs) i don't know that's a whole other discussion but anyway yeah it's just sometimes i think you should be able to if you're curious about history of movie of video games like you can play or watch the old stuff and realize it came from a different time yeah because i also tried um the original i guess legend of zelda and i was not good at it because of the movement it's yeah it's different right and like it's been so long since i've played a game with that style of movement and i'm so used to you know quality of life things more recently that going back to that i understand that's how it works but i had such a hard time oh yeah playing it zelda the first zelda is really hard because when you swing your you you don't swing your sword he only stabs so you stab in one of four directions Mm. whereas in later games you get more of like a a little arc in front of you so it's easier to hit enemies and i think there was also a thing like he moves in the four directions which is fine but i think there was something i was I think my problem was I was switching from, say, up to one of the sides. I had to, I don't know, maybe individually hit up and then stop and then hit the side where I kind of just mush my control in that direct. I don't know. There was something about it. Yeah, it didn't have. You had to, like, start and stop and then pick the new one. 
I think it didn't have um, eight directional movements, so it was like up, down, left, or right. You couldn't walk in a diagonal, so like if something was coming at you from... Well, nothing comes at you from a diagonal. Well, the bats do sometimes. But for the most part, like the game was equipped to deal with that. It's just awkward, like going into it now. Mm -hmm. That's one of the interesting things about Suikoden 2's re or the Suikoden remakes. The originals also had just a four directional movement up, down, left. But they're with the remake, not remake, remaster. I don't know. The the one they're re releasing, like it has a directional movement. And they even went in and made sprites for him running in, you know. The additional directions. Yeah. So it's like, oh, you yeah. This is one of those things like modern players will expect that but like back in the day we just didn't really think about it too hard mm. i don't know it's it's tough because like i e even back in the day like some games did do that like final fantasy 6 i love that game it also you can only walk up down left or right but chrono trigger from the same ish era that does have a directional movement mm -hmm. so it's like it just it just depends you gotta just gotta get into the mindset of like each game was made with like a different process or a different time it's 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 not like you can't expect everything you expect in games today to be in the old games yeah. and you kind of just when you're going back to experience history you got to realize that some things are just going to be kind of different and freaking hell remember to save often <laughs> yes yes i will try to remember that anyway we've gone on for quite a long time so i think that was a fun discussion we always just ramble about random stuff and I don't know, I kind of think that's kind of half the point of this. <laughs> I mean, it definitely can help some people fall asleep to just listen to random bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just two people talking about the dumbest things. Anyway, alright, so that's been that's been the podcast. And we're going to leave off the with a nice song from Monster Hunter, which sounds like it's going to be very exciting and high-paced, but I promise it's one of the chillest songs in the series. And one of my favorites, called... Poké Village. So, good night and goodbye.